Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. Yeah, I'm by myself. RJ is at his Team Roping Finals. Now, um, he did prepare a clip for you, and I will pop that in probably in the farmhouse, just so you can, you know, see what he's talking about. Um, but he did prepare a clip before he left. Um, he had to be up. He rodeoed last night, and then he came in late, and so he made a real quick one this morning, and he's like, here you go, Mom, bye. So, anyway, all right, this is episode 141 on June 24th, and we're actually already open. It's almost noon, so if I get interrupted with a customer, I'm just going to have to go on. You know how it is. Life, on camera, live. No, it's not live, but that's the way we treat it. All right, so, in the barn stalls, I have one really important thing that... Um, I want to show you. Um, by the way, all the horses are healing up. Um, they're getting better. Uh, we don't have... Coop still has her stitches, but they dissolve away, and it's looking clean. Durf, his cut is starting to heal really nicely with the Underwoods. Um, Storms has healed over. And if you remember, she was like the first to do it, or second to do it. First to do it. I can't remember. Um, anyway, she um, just has the scab with no hair now so it, it's and we underwoods did so th they heal up pretty good but I'm trying to think of what else little ducks healing up in the barn we had another chicken get a leg I don't know it was limping so it went back in the big barn so we're just kind of juggling um in and out with the chickens and that's the only thing that's in the barn but yes I'm fussing with something um if you remember uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I can't remember when we put it in the podcast, um, I was notified by the Bureau of Land Management, I got my little thing here, that told me that I had to um, <sighs> file my last uh, inspection with them, and they would issue my title. Well, guess what came in the mail? Certificate of title. Um, it says official wild free roaming horse or bureau certificate of title. It's enlisted to me. Um, it says that I'm granted title to the animal below in accordance with the Act of 1971 Public Law 92-195 as amended by Public Law 95-514. Um, yeah, and then it gives his description what his um, freeze brand, the numbers, they use like ancient something, but what it, what it means. Um, and yeah, he's mine. He has um, certificate uh, record of title transfer. If I ever do decide to sell him, I'm not going to. I'm just telling you, not going to. He's mine. So, um, anyway, it gives descriptions and it tells you how to read the alpha angle code of the freeze mark right there. Yeah. If you want to look it up, you look that up. Because I'm just not into all that stuff. I do have all my stuff in my little envelope here with his original paperwork. So I can prove everything. He's mine. And I can prove that he is of my legal title. So um, that means <clears throat> he's no longer under their care. He's no longer subject to their inspections. I don't have to have them out at my place anymore. Well, I do because I have Star. But! He's mine. Yay. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. Um, okay, so th that was my most quit. Him and the pig are fighting over a blankie. Um, you can put four blankies down. They both want the one. It doesn't matter which one. It's the one. They both want it. Anyway. All right, so I'm trying to think what else in the barn stalls. Oh, and this, maybe it's a good thing to pop RJ's little clip in right here so it's going to start with the little garden thing 
and he's going to show you something and then he'll get on to what he wants to tell you. I gotta go, but today I'm going to show you a few things that interest me on the farm. First, First I got a strawberry. Not the only strawberry, but a good one, right? Yep. You're going to eat it, aren't you? Yep. There you go. Go for it. Good? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. And now we're off to the next thing that interests you. Another thing going on the farm that's of interest to me is we got three new kids. Yeah. Okay. So why is this? They're not just any kids, are they? No, Mom went and got them. Okay, but one is a... One is a bottle baby. Okay. And we used to do... The one you're pointing to isn't a bottle baby. Uh, bottle baby's over there with her feet, nose stuck in the feed. She is more interested in eating anything than the two that need to be eating are, huh? Mm -hmm. So that means tomorrow we have to mug those two if they're still not eating as much feed as we need, huh? Nope. So, but the little one... She likes to stick her nose in everything. So she's had a bottle. Now she's checking out the feed. <laughs> she's going to be a good one, ain't she? She's going to fit right in here and eat just about anything, ain't she? Mm -hmm. Okay, now what is this up here? We set this pen up so mom can catch them. Okay. By catch, what do you mean? Just so she can bottle feed and stuff. Okay, but it's so that I can put them up in there, close it. And then I have them in a confined area so that when they're first being broke to bottle, um, I can get a hold of them, correct? Yep. And Belle helped me set it up, right? I think we did a pretty good job, huh? Yep. And these panels were pulled out of the, what? Old kit shed, which is the main thing now. So, um, we just kind of set it up this way, same as we had it before. The only other thing is, is that there was a wall in the other shed right here. And then the, that second, that third panel would have gone across here so that I'd had two. But they don't fit, do they? No. And we don't have a wall, so. But it worked pretty good, though, didn't it? Yep. All right. Anything else of interest to you? Nope. Why aren't you going to be on the podcast? I have been roping all week and practicing for a final since today. So. Okay. And you're going to be off in what town? McAllister. Doing what? Roping. Roping what? Uh, Kev? Team roping. Team roping. You and Wyatt are going off to your big team roping finals, correct? Yep. All right. So. Bye. Okay. So, inserting that little clip was perfect timing. I had to wait a little bit longer to come back on because the train came by. <laughs> no RJ to jump up and close the window. So, um, anyway. Uh, yeah, we got three baby Kevs in. Um. I kind of was feeling a little nostalgic because when we first started this farm, that's all I did was baby calves. RJ was in public school. My husband worked all day and my daughter was in school back then. And that's all I did was play with the calves and I went to the sale and I pick up maybe one or two every week. Um, and yeah, that's what I did. So, uh, I don't know. I'm just liking it, just liking it. So, uh, the little 45 pound one is her name is Delilah and she will join Bidet as our rideable herd. Um, Bidet is getting to a point where number one she's kind of old. Um, she's six. Now cows can live to be a little bit older but normally by this time people have sold her off. Um, and she might look, be a little bit older. I think we got her in 2009. So make her almost eight so I don't know how their bodies do or if she really should be ridden um, I don't mind doing it so much with a young calf because I know their bodies can take it but an older one and she's pregnant she's on maternity leave a lot of times so um, yeah it just is what it is so Delilah will be joining her as a rideable cow um, we started bottle, bottle feeding her um, we've already had our first little obstacle I guess you'd say clash whatever you want to call it back when I did bottle calves RJ was in school so he wasn't here um, this morning I talked to him and I said can you help me get the two bigger ones and make sure that they're getting some feed I, I if they won't take a bottle I like to throw feed in their mouth so they understand it's something to eat 
if they've been raised out on a pasture and you take all their grass away, they don't know what to eat. So um, they're babies and they're learning. So anyway, I talked to RJ and he was like, well, I don't have time right now. He says, you know, we'll just give them another day. No, we won't. I went out there and uh, Lee's home today with me. Uh, so he went out there and helped me catch him because the red one is really wild and you can't catch her without a rope and I don't rope them. The black one, I caught her. I got um, three-fourths of a bottle of goat's milk down her and about four or five handfuls of feed, which is good. It's fine. Um, she does have a little bit of scours. The little one that had scours that came in, the red one, um, I saw him poop today and it looked amazing. The littlest one, we've backed her off. I had her on three bottles, um, three-fourths of a bottle. She's only 45 pounds. You have to remember, she is smaller than a Labrador Retriever. And she's a cow. So, at 45 pounds, my sheep outweigh her. The little miniature Shetlands outweigh her. The South Downs outweigh her. Um, anyway, so we had her taking three bottles at three-fourths of a bottle a day. Um, we do not gorge them in the morning and gorge them at night. I know as a standard for healthy calves that works. Um, our thing is, is that we want to simulate what mom does with them so that they come up healthier. It just makes sense to us. And we used to work with an old time vet who believed the same way we do. Um, he has since passed on, but all that wisdom that he gave me, you betcha, I know all about, I can raise a bottle cap on V8 juice if I have to. Um, I can, uh, saline solution bubbles under their skin. There's a lot of things that people don't realize you can do that I do. I don't wait for them to get down. I don't wait for them to get dehydrated. They can be out there looking just fine, but if their skin is not hydrated enough, and yes, I check several times a day, I go out there and give them saline solution as prevention. So uh, we do a lot of things different and keep them hydrated, keep them healthy, and try to simulate mom's milking instead of gorging them in the morning and at night because that gives them bellyache. So I had him, her, Delilah, on three feedings a day, which I know is a lot, but if you think you're raising a baby, you know, those babies eat about every two hours. Um, that put her out at about every four hours eating through the day. And they sleep through the night, so I wasn't too worried. Then her poop got a little bit runny. And so we backed her off. I gave her some medicine to stop the diarrhea because I don't want her to dehydrate in this heat, which is my big thing that I'm watching for. Um, and then I backed her down and we went back to four bottles every three hours. And if I have to go out there and do every two hours, I will. The other thing is, is that she, I don't know, that powder, I've had it like a year and they say if you store it in a container, sealed up, no moisture, blah, 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 that is fine. But it makes me nervous. So she's getting good bottles with goat's milk and she's getting powder. So um, her powder one is at morning and night. And then um, her middle one was the milk, but now the two middle ones will be the milk. So, yeah. If I thought I could graft her onto Holly, I would. <laughs> Just saying. But anyway, she's doing wonderful. We don't raise them like most people do, giving them full feet, full um, bottles in the morning and bottles at night. We do it throughout the day. And I can do that because I'm home. Sorry. I'm waiting for my tea. That's Pepsi and it's really sweet. I'm waiting for my tea to get done. Anyway. So, I think that's all we have for in the barn stalls. Not that we haven't rambled on. We, <laughs> I haven't rambled on long enough. But, I'm super excited. It's what I know. I've done it for years. And, and I'm glad to have it back on the farm. I know that people think it's silly. But, it's kind of who I am. I'm okay with that. Alright, mending fences. We had a lot. The interns this week helped me. We made a list. And I'm just going to read down it. Um, they start out with the waters and collecting the eggs for that day, just because that's what they do. Um, and then we move, Bell helped me move the calf stall while um, Ashley cleaned up the limbs and stuff. And she tore apart the um, 
picnic table. Then Belle and I came back and we had to have Lee involved. It, he stole my big round bit so the bolts wouldn't go through and I didn't have a bit big enough and Ashley was trying to grind it out with just the drill bit but we made him come back and do it right. Got the braces up, got the seats in and the girls finished fixing the picnic table. Uh, Belle started on the bench down at the I'm not painting the new wood that I put on there, but we are putting potluck garden on there. So, uh, and then I'm going to clear coat over that. So she started with that. She's got it all penciled on. And then um, I have the pink and purple paint, but she didn't get it painted. She just ran out of time. Ashley, while she was, while Bella was doing the bench, Ashley started, and this is going to sound really dorky to people, but we are starting a dandelion garden. I've got an old compost pile that really humps up and it's hard to mow and blah, blah, blah. So we went around the garden and Ashley picked all the white fuzzy dandelion seeds. And she went over there and she smeared them on the ground and then watered them in. So hopefully that old compost pile turned into a dandelion garden. Dandelion heads are good in salads and I only eat them raw. So I don't know any other way to fix them. If you know another way to fix them, put it in the comments below and I'll be glad to try it. Um, I use the leaves and salads, just like a lettuce with my lettuce. Um, and then, of course, little kids eat dandelions. I let them eat them all the time. <laughs> Their parents are like, ew. So, yeah, we have meat and clover, too. But Oh, well. All right, so she did that. Um, we rounded up the one chicken. We finished our shearing yesterday. <clears throat> yes, we got the parts in, got... Went and got a blade sharpened. Um, we had just complication after complication. But it's good. We're done. Knight, Rami, all of them. The man pen. Everybody sheared. Hey, we're done. I'm good with that. Uh, let's see here. The limbs, the chickens. They redid the picnic table. We did a bunch of stuff. Moved that stall. Cleaned all the waters. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, and then we made lotion bars and stuff. That's not mending fences. We did some other things. So, um, anyway, so just a lot of little repairs around. We're still trying to get the big tree taken down. Lee is hopefully going to work some on that today. I don't know. It is what it is. All right, in the yarn farm, shearing is done. Like I said, it's done, and I'm going to start washing. Um, we're still doing our fiber study online at on YouTube. If you watch those. That's great. We love having you. We love hearing the feedback, too. Um, people have actually started to contact me about this one or that one. And, and just know, guys, that some of those were gifts from friends. Um, I put the source or try to keep up with the source of where I got it. Um, some of them are blends that people have gotten. Um, I do have to find a way, and I'm going to do it because then I'm going to put out this. Anybody who wants me to spin and review their sample, as long as I haven't already done that breed, I'll do it for free. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I've got to find a way to put which ones I've actually done because there's a ton of them. I have three binders full. Um, and this is, I'm finishing off what I have in my tote. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm hey, leave the pig alone, Moose. They're actually fighting. And it's terrible. And I know it's all over a blanket. Anyway, so that's about it for the yarn farm. Um, the fiber study, those pages are up on the uh, web page. So if you want to start your own book, you can. Um, I know, I'm, I'm hoping my other lady joined because she is purchasing some sheep uh, and a goat. Lincoln is going to her house. And I'm hoping that she, she actually got to look through the notebook. She was like, this is really cool. Uh, but she is just now getting back into her fiber journey. She had some personal setbacks. And um, these will be her first fiber animals back. She's raised fiber animals before. Um, life got in the way. She's coming back. So um, I'm hoping that she'll start doing the fiber study with us. So, uh, all right, in the fields. Yeah, we, I actually have stuff growing. I have things to say in the fields this spring, this summer. I, I'm really tickled about that. Um, I got two mulberry starts from a friend. I actually got four, but I always split them with the community garden. Okay. Number one, it's my backup plan. If my mulberry starts die and the ones make it at the community garden, 
Trista will make sure that those are will give me as many starts as I need to get it right. Okay, so each year I'll get some starts off of it if I have to. Um, it's not mul mulberry, it's elderberry. They're elderberries, sorry. Um, but anyway, I do that with, even if I buy a seed packet, um, most seed packets have 20 seeds in them. I can't do one or two plants. I don't need 20. So I split the pack with Trista. We save money. She gets, you know, her step, her grant, like she gets community involvement in her grant writing stuff because they're taking in donations and blah, blah, blah. She gets to start some different stuff. And I always try to do stuff that she isn't doing so that we're doing different stuff. Um, and that way I can give to her because I know she won't have it. Like I gave her some of the loofah seeds, some of the dragon's egg seeds, dragon egg cucumbers if you remember those. Um, what else did we do? We did something else together. Can't remember. Black tomatoes. We did that. Mine didn't do. I mean I've got one plant out there and it's, unless it's going to produce, you know, two months from now. It doesn't even have a bloom on it and it's still about that tall. I'm not impressed, okay? But I think it's my gardening skills that I'm not impressed with. Um, anyway, so we've been splitting that. So I have four elderberries. Two are located at the community garden and two are in mine. And then um, I had another gentleman. We went to a gardening class. And I had another gentleman give me like five pepper bell pepper plants. The rabbits found them and stripped all the leaves. I saved the two biggest ones. And then there was another one that I didn't notice that the rabbits hadn't really gotten to. And it has four, but they're just stemmed with like four leaves now. They've stripped all the leaves up. And the others are just stems like that tall. I don't know. Um, let's see. We do have the two watermelon plants. We're hoping that that's going to do good. I solarized the, I just did it yesterday, so it'll be on next week's garden update, but I am going to do my own version of solar clearing my land for the weeds, and I put wool under there, and I made it wet so it would hot and compost faster, and then I'm going to put hay over it, and, and it's actually working towards next year's garden. I'm going to do that garden for next year. I'm not going to do anything in it right now. It's going to have to decompose and all that stuff, so, or compost, I guess you'd say. Oh. But anyway, um, I'm working on it, and I am preparing for next year. And if this works, then I'm going to do the whole garden like that one fall. I'm just going to rip it out, not do any fall garden, and I'm going to start it that way if this works. If it doesn't work, not out anything. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I still, I still have just as many weeds as I did before. So, um, let's see what else. I guess in the, oh, and Archie picked his strawberry. You saw that in, in the barn stalls just because it, he just, you know, clipped it in there and he turned the camera off, turned it on. He's like, okay, come with me. Turn it off, turn it on. That's it. So, um, he did get a strawberry. He's been picking one or two a day. It is what it is. And he's liking it. And the other day he got a really mushy one. He gave it to the pig and the pig was like, <laughs> she ate it up. She loved it. I don't know what the difference is between store and the ones out there to a pig. I know they taste better, but they taste better. But this one was really soft and mushy and yucky. So I don't know if she just likes them mushy that way or not. So anyway, all right. In the farmhouse with the interns, I've taught them to make lotion bars. Um, they've decided that shea butter is nasty. I get the unrefined. I get it. Um, I actually get it through walmart.com and I get like five pounds for 15 bucks but it is a huge brick and it keeps and I want I don't remember what country um, it's to keep women employed in third world countries but I don't know which third world country so anyway I get it really cheap and it comes in this big block and you have to cut it up and I just you know, I'm not worried about getting it on my hands. I think it feels good. Um, but the girls have decided they don't like that. But other than that, they're cool with the lotion bars. <laughs> I also worked and I made five different kinds of soaps. I think I've got peach, pumpkin, tomato, goat's milk, 
And then I did my tomato and goat's milk in the same bar. So it's a goat's milk tomato thing. Um, so I did all of those. I've been doing some custom spinning consignment, I guess you'd call it. Um, I still don't have the other. I have one of the um, footless sandal or barefoot sandals done. And I've gotten further on the other one. I just don't have it done. So I'm going to get it done by Wednesday and take it in. And then I've got to get to work on my fair stuff. I, I did make a bar of soap that I'm going to turn in with my fair stuff. But I haven't crocheted anything for the fair. What am I waiting on? I don't know. Because I can't decide on what I want to do. I did that big camel thing last year. And I don't know. And before that I did a poncho. And I hand spin for them. So I'm honestly thinking that I might do like a cowl and a hat set. I, I don't know. If I get on the ball and finish my Tunisian baby doll shirt, that would probably be amazing to take in there. But I don't know. Can I get it done? It's honestly just a big square and then putting the pieces together. So I could get it done. But I don't know if I'm going to get it done. I'm being honest. So anyway, um, I don't have anything. The soaps are curing, so it's not like I can um, sell those right now. There's nothing off to market or anything. We talked about the Etsy shop. And if I put anything in the Etsy shop, it will be lotion bars, soaps, and raw wool. Um, I don't know if I'll do any spinning like that. If I send anything else to a mill, I might then, but not. The SC shop just takes too much time, and it just takes, you have to do professional type pictures, and as you guys know, we don't even do our videos professional. Either you follow us or you don't. Um, it's that simple. It's We're entertaining. If you want to know what's going on here, you want to know what's going on in our house, this is the place to be. If you're going to critique the videos and the photos, yeah, it's probably not. We're farmers. We're not electronic whizzes. So you can't be good at everything. So um, the photos for the Etsy shop weren't very high quality, and people just didn't really come and, and look at our products. Once we'd get the products in their hands, they're like, oh, my gosh, got to have this. So pretty much the only people that bought from our Etsy shop were repeat customers. And if you ever need anything, just email me. I'll tell you if I've got it, and I'll get it out in the mail to you. So, anyway, all right, I'm going to get off here. I've got a ton of other things to do. Um, as you can tell, I'm already, I tried to look decent. I didn't want to do it with my hat on, but I've already been out hot and sweaty, wrestled the calves, fed twice for those little bottle calves, wrestled the big one, got a bottle down it. The big red one is not taking it. So, I did throw some feed in his mouth, or her mouth. So we'll see how that goes. But other than that, I will see you on the flip side next time. <laughs>